Welcome, everybody, in the Movie Guys Verse. This is Jordan here, part of Movie Guys Podcast. We wanted to say thank you so much for downloading this most recent episode. If you don't know what Movie Guys Podcast is, we are a new movie review show that is updated weekly. You can check us out at movieguyspodcast.com and also movieguyspodcast.podbean.com. Sit back and enjoy the show. We're fucking retarded. Welcome everybody to Movie Guys Podcast. And tonight we're talking about the Halloween franchise. Part one of our part two of the Halloween series. Uh, we're getting ready for the release of the new Halloween movie starring Jimmy Lee Curtis as back as Laurie Strode. We had to open with the Silver Shamrock song because why not? Uh, but this is Jordan, and I'm joined here with Ed. Eric, unfortunately, kind of make it tonight. He had um, he had a prior engagement with his family. But uh, Eric, we're gonna do this Friday. We're gonna do this. Uh, uh, I was gonna say Friday the 13th, but I was gonna say uh, Halloween retrospective episode tonight. All for you, buddy. So Ed, how are you doing tonight? Um, I am much worse now that you made me do that. I didn't make you. you got me <laughs> I said, hey, let's do this. And you were like, okay. Um, well, yeah, no, I mean, yes. I mean, here's the, here's the thing. Like, I'm, I'm excited to talk about this franchise. I, I'm legitimately t- excited. It's one of my favorite ever film franchises, particularly in the horror uh, genre. And you know how much I love horror. Our fans know, much, know how much I love cheesy, shitty horror movies. And, you know, so, yeah, when you when we found out that uh, the new the new ish one, even though it's actually the sequel to the first one that they made in 78, even though John Carpenter already made that sequel, but he's remaking a different sequel, whatever. I'm excited. Yes, I'm excited. It's confusing, right? And yeah, also it's the confusing part, the director, I believe his last name is Green, I forget. Uh, but the director of the new Halloween movie is the guy who brought us Pineapple Express. So yeah, I saw that. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know what to think. I, I I'm actually very excited, and then I guess we'll get into the Halloween franchise after this. But uh, I'm excited because stoner movies tradi- uh, traditionally suck for me. They're not good, right? Um, why? But- why? Why? But they're just not good movies, you know, like, you know, just this, you get a diamond in the rough and Pineapple Express is that diamond in a rough. I'm Pineapple Express was your hot stoner movie, but it had more weight to it. And it was funny. A la Dumb and Dumber. Dumb and Dumber is your stupid, dumb, buddy road trip movie, but it had more weight to it to make it better. You see what I'm saying? I mean, I get it. I mean, I guess stoner movies are funnier to stoners. It's probably why. But that's why I feel that the new Halloween movie's in good hands. Because that guy took a typical stoner flick and made something more out of it. So that's also the only movie he's ever done that's really been any good. Sure, but then then you're going to take the guy who did that, and now you're going to give him a very stale, very old, very your dad slasher movie franchise. And he's probably going to do something different. But tonight, fans, everybody out there in the movie guys verse, we're going to talk about the Halloween franchise all the way from the first one all the way to the part two sequel, remake, whatever you want to call it, all leading up to the new movie for next week's episode. So let's get into it. The first Halloween movie came out in 1978, written and directed by John Carpenter. Um, do I want to say classic? I mean, cause Jesus, I mean, that I mean, first, how could you not? Uh, Halloween one did for me. I, I just, I, I don't know how to explain it. It was shocking. It was scary. It was terrifying because Michael Myers was called the shape in the credits. Like he's just the shape of evil. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, but I think what made that first movie so great was because of that opening, right? You see that opening, you know exactly what movie you're getting into, where little kid Mike was killing his sister with the clown mask. Well, yeah, and you know what's 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 really you know what's what's really funny is that like 
I didn't know this until you pointed it out, and I had never even really thought about it. Like that movie was was really it was it was sort of standalone ish to a certain degree. And as we'll get into it, I might be jumping ahead a little bit. Like the franchise in itself was really the only one that told a long story. Mm-hmm. But they've since changed, but forget about it. But you know, like that one was, yeah. I mean, it was classic. It was. It, there were a lot of things about that movie, like at the time, or excuse me, I don't even know at the time. At the time that I had seen it, I had also. I mean, I was. I by the time I had seen it and was old enough to watch it and understand it, it was the mid nineties. Okay, so. I had already seen Friday the 13th. I had already seen Hellraiser. I had already seen Nightmare on Elm Street. You know what I mean? So by the time I got around to watching this movie, the original, right, um, it was one of those things that I was not expecting a story to be told. And this was different because, it, you know, you've got the the shrink. Uh, you got, you know what I mean? I forget. I, what's that? Dr. Loomis. Yeah, Dr. Loomis. You've got Dr. Loomis, who is basically the protagonist in these movies, in this one specifically. But, like, he, you know, like, there's there's a, they're hinting at a backstory that they don't give you in in the original. Sure. So I, that's why I enjoyed it. Well, also what I liked about the, um, about Halloween when I was a kid growing up is because it did exactly what it was set out to do. Um, mm-hmm. where you got your Friday the 13th, which it takes place in a summer camp, right? Mm-hmm. So you're safe. Just don't go to summer camp. It's not going to yeah, happen. Just, right? just, don't, just don't have sex at a summer camp. Yeah. Or do drugs. Right. Nightmare on Elm Street, I had nothing to do with Freddy's death. He's not going to come after me because the whole point of Freddy was that he was going to come after the parents and, and the one way they cannot protect their kids, it's in their dreams. So I'm fine. Michael Myers mm-hmm. is white middle America suburbia. That kind of shit doesn't happen. Right, right. Especially in Haddonfield, which would be like kind of like your a la Springfield, Illinois, a very <laughs> mid America, blue collar kind of a kind of a city in Illinois. Sherman, Illinois. Yeah. Uh, these <laughs> these kind of things don't happen. And I think that's what made it scary. Uh, Lori Strode, though, was not your typical uh, slasher girl. Um, if you recall in the first movie, she smoked weed. Mm-hmm. She smoked mm-hmm. weed. Uh, the only thing that she was stereotypical was that she was a virgin. That's the only, right. thing. That's the only thing. Also, Ed, I don't know if you noticed this, but this is supposed to, be, supposed to take place in, uh, in Illinois, right? Sure. The famous, uh, not famous, but, uh, you know, the iconic scenes, I guess, maybe, is when there is when Lori's walking with her uh, high school girlfriends down the street, you know, during the day from work, uh, from school. Mm-hmm. Those are palm trees. You know they, what? I didn't even notice it. <laughs> they filmed it in California. It was filmed in California. It was not filmed in Illinois at all whatsoever, the first movie. But until Blair Witch Project came out in 1999. Halloween 1978 was the most successful independent film ever made. Really? Until Blair Witch came out in 1999. Hmm. And Blair Witch made it for less. Halloween's budget was just a modest 100000 and some change. That's a lot of money for uh, the late 70s, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the, the equivalent would have been, but absolutely. Blair Witch made it for under 10000 well, that's, I mean, that's different. <laughs> I know it's different, but I'm saying, though, I mean, like, un- but it's just, it's crazy. It's the, crazy Blair Witch, the Blair Witch was a different beast. You got to remember that. Was the Blair Witch was a, diff- was a completely different beast. It took the world by storm. I even, I even believed it to be true at the time. I was a kid. You know what I mean? I was a kid. Because it came out, what, 99, you said? 99, yeah. So we were 12. It was 12. It was 12. We were 12. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so the first Halloween was iconic, but I'm sure the fans don't want to listen. Don't want to listen for however long the show is going to be about us talking about how great the first Halloween movie is because it's great. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of great iconic kills, um, but I'm sure they want us to talk about the sequels, which we're going to get into here in a second. Um, but um, we don't know in the first movie about the brother sister combo. We get that in number two, Halloween two. When uh, when Michael Myers 
is in a is in a, a hospital. Now, Ed, I know you just watched that recently. Mm-hmm. What do you think of Halloween Two? Um, it's more. I mean, it's more stereo. It's more stereotypical, but at this, as you have your tip, uh, it's more typical of your eighties horror films. Mm-hmm. But they build on the story. It picks up immediately, like the first. I don't know, less than five minutes of the movie are the ending of Halloween. Mm-hmm. So it's the like first one, big, long movie, essentially. Yeah, the first one basically ends with Dr. Loomis shooting Michael and he falls off of the balcony. And then Dr. Loomis looks out and he's gone. Right? Well, the second one starts with, uh, with, with Laurie Strode telling the kids to run out and go call the cops and go to your neighbor's house. And Dr. Loomis shooting him six times. And we see him fall from a different angle. Yeah. He went from a, which, by the way, I don't know if you noticed it, but there had to I have been some platform. Yes. Because he, like, floated on, he, like, floated <laughs> and, like, was stepped up on top of the balcony and fell. No, uh, no there's also a scene in that. I, I thought you were going to say something else, but there was a scene where he falls off the balcony. And then in the first movie, they didn't show the fall. Mm-hmm. But in the sequel, they show the fall, and there's clearly a crash mat underneath the grass. Well, I mean, the yeah. Found, and I'm just <laughs> like, oh, that's terrible. <laughs> they, they, you know what? I think what happened, I don't know this for a fact, but it just feels like it. Because the scene, to open that, the, to open what is now the, the, the new movie, when Dr. Loomis runs out and sees the grass. Yeah. Right? It's clearly high grass. They must have caught that they did that. They must have caught that they couldn't get it again, right? The stuntman was like, I'm, I'm not fucking doing that again. They, caught, they, they they realized they got the wrong angle. So they must have re- gone back and reshot it because the grass is like is like three inches high. <laughs> it's really high. So they must, they, they must have said, this is the only way we can make it up. No, I mean, the sequel does not hold up to the original. I think what made the original so good was this is, came out of nowhere. I mean, Michael Myers was called The Shape. We know we all know that the famous Michael Myers mask is actually an unused molding of William Shatner's face. I'm sure you knew that. Ed. <laughs> I did so, not. But you did not know I, that? No, I didn't know that. that really? So you got to realize I don't know the I don't know the behind okay. the scenes shit of the of this franchise. So, you do. So you Ed, do. I don't. After the show, I need you to Google William Shatner, Michael Myers. Mm-hmm. The famous mask, the mask that's been all the movies, right? Mm -hmm. Carpenter could not figure out what to have the mask to be. He he, he just couldn't figure it out, right? Mm -hmm. He was at a Halloween store, and in the back of the Halloween store was a William Shatner mask mold that did not get painted yet to look like Shatner. So he said, I'm going to buy that white mask. So the Michael Myers mask is William Shatner's face. I did not know that. I, I swear to Christ, I thought you knew that. Yes. So William Shatner, I don't think it's gotten any royalties, but <laughs> Michael Myers is wearing his face. You know what I mean? It's like, because I, I, I don't know if I can spell this out for you more. When you take a, when you take a mask mold, it's always white or like a skin tone color. And then the artist you know, spray paints it or, or, or does paint to it to make it look just like that character, right? Sure, sure. Well, it was supposed to be for Star Trek. It was William Shatner's Star Trek mask, and they just had the mold and the famous Michael Myers hair, right, coming out. Mm-hmm. Well, that's Shatner's hair and face. <laughs> so I'm surprised you didn't know that. Okay. No, I did not. Well, all right. So, yeah, after the show, Google uh, Michael Myers or William Shatner, and you'll – See exactly what I'm talking about, and then you'll text me and say, "Wow, you blew my mind." So, the sequel continues on in the hospital. Michael Myers, a scary part of the of the sequel was not scary, besides only one part to me, and that's when after the music credit starts and everything happens, we get we 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 begin to follow Michael Myers with the camera all over his shoulder, and he just so happens to sneak into people's homes they don't even notice. Mm-hmm. To get that's creepy. <clears throat> yeah, no, I mean that's we start to get what becomes Michael Myers, the fame, you know, the famous Michael Myers. That's what we, that's what we slowly start. To get. I just, I just find that creepy, Ed. It's like, you know, like it's Halloween. You know, you're, you're busy doing whatever you're doing, 
and this guy and 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 the way the director chose to shot to shoot it with the camera over Michael Myers' shoulder and follow him the whole time. That's great. That's that's creepy. How they did that was great. Uh, and the rest of the movie takes place in a hospital. Uh, we gotta get into the kills here eventually in this franchise. Uh, but the greatest kill in the sequel, in my opinion, is the hot chick with the beautiful breast uh, getting burned alive in the hot bath thing. Mm-hmm. That was just lovely. Yeah, that was that was the unique kill. Like the first one is some is the, like one of the cop's daughters. Uh, the 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 next one's an old lady uh, that you don't really see. That's the only one you see happen. Like you see him scald her with the hot. Yeah. the hot water it's a really good kill it's a fantastic kill great kill laurie strode is in the movie but then she's not you know i mean laurie strode is spending half the movie being comatose in the room which is fine and this is where we find out in this movie that laurie strode was actually I don't, i'm just gonna say laurie myers i don't know if that was her original name and well yeah, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, when she was born, she could have been Jessica Myers, but mm-hmm. let's just go with Lori Myers for the sake of argument. I'm sure some fans out there would argue, but anyway. So we got Lori Myers, and Michael Myers kills his sister. Everything happens. Lori was a baby at that point, and then what happens is she gets adopted by a real estate family called the mm-hmm. Strill, and they raise her as their own. Yes. Stupid question. Hmm. You and your wife just adopt a baby girl whose older sister got murdered and the brother's completely psychotic. Look that. Mm-hmm. You keep that baby girl a block away from that house. You don't tell her about it. You you don't move out of the city. Seems I mean, I would say that more likely than not that the adopting agency would not let that happen. But forget about all that. No, I mean, like, the guy's the guy owns a real estate company <laughs> at that point. You know what I mean? So it's like the dude owns a real estate company, so he's not fucking leaving that town. And she was an infant, and they figure if they never tell her, and basically the whole town wants to forget it happened, right? Sure. That, you know, they're not going to really – I mean, it's, it's something that to talk about, but, like, you're, you would think that she would never have found out Anyway, I mean, like, I mean, like, I mean, like, she would have had to find out because, like, parents that were around at the time or whatever, be like, oh, that's that's the Myers girl. Yeah, I mean, eventually she would have gone sometime in her life and found out. Not a seventeen-year-old senior in high school and not knowing this. It's crazy. I mean, maybe, maybe it's ludicrous. It's ludicrous. Maybe. Well, that's it. Okay. Well, a guy gets fu- a a lunatic gets murders his kid, murders his family, then yeah. gets shot. 3,700 times in the course of fucking 30 years, 40 years worth of movies mm-hmm. and still is not dead. Well, yeah, hey, you know what? I guess I cannot get my logic <laughs> in my Halloween movies. You um, can't. What do you feel about that, Ed? What do you feel about Laurie Strode being Michael Myers' sister? Do you feel that that gives the movie clout or weight? Do you feel that it's even necessary? Or do you feel that they should never have done that and just have Michael Myers go after Lori because she was the one that got away. Well, here's the thing. I mean, like, that's what we're led to believe, that he's going after his sister because she's the one that he has didn't get to kill when he was when he was younger. You know, so, like, but this is also what makes me fall in love with the Halloween franchise, Okay is the fact that there's an actual fucking story. It's not like, like, okay, like you like Friday the 13th. That's your favorite, that's your favorite horror Movie, franchise. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, slasher, that's your favorite, horror. yeah, slasher horror franchise. But they completely deviate from the true story after the first one. I mean, let's not be a, honest. Not a I mean, not a okay, well, okay, in the second one, in the second one, Jason's, the the in the second one, Jason, the voice of Jason's mother is like, "Do it, kill her, Jason, kill her." You know, like, okay, that is in there, that's in there. But after that, it's like, you know, he first of all, later on, he goes to outer space. That's then, bad. That's bad. then, yeah, he then fights Freddy, 
And the, you know what I mean? Like, and he's afraid of the water and then and later on. But anyway, forget about it. Forget about it. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not trying to argue with you about those. I'm just saying what does this for me is that there's an actual story they follow with the exception of season of the witch. There's an actual story that they kind of sort of follow. Uh, so it, it's one of those things that like, even though it's a slasher horror franchise, they follow the fact that Michael Myers is trying to kill his sister, Lori Strode. All right, fine. Fair enough. So at the end of that movie, Michael Myers and Donald Pleasance both get blown up in a huge fire mall. Lori Strode survives. And everybody's chomping at the bit and getting ready for part three because Michael's coming back. No, he is not. We got Halloween three season of the witch. Which is Sorry, Tom Atkins. Yes. Yeah. Which is absolutely one of the worst movies I've ever seen. So now you watched this recently because you haven't seen this in years. And I told you to prepare for this episode right. to check this out. And I told you, and this is me quoting myself. Tell me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. Terrible Halloween movie. Never should have put the Halloween name on it. Stupid, fun, slapstick 80s horror movie. You do not agree with that. No. You do not agree that it you do not agree that season of the witch is just a fun turn my brain off. This is absolutely crazy, just fun, stupid movie. You do not agree with that. The I mean, I watched it wanting to turn my brain off, but then things would happen that would kick my brain back on in the sense like that's that's not possible. You mean like how they stole a piece of the rock from Stonehenge that was from Ireland, but it's not in Ireland? Or the fact that the when they put the masks on and they have the the shamrock, whatever the fuck, shamrock company, shamrock. silver shamrock commercial, turns the kid's face. Like it was cool, like the pumpkin head thing when they did the test, they start to show you. Like the, the pumpkin head like melts, starts to melt, and it that's squishes a great his head. Effect. And bl- that's, that's a great, great effect. effect. But then they ruin it by having grasshoppers, who you are supposed to think are cockroaches, but they're fucking grasshoppers. And snakes crawl yeah. out of his head. Yeah, it's witchcraft. <laughs> There's no witches. I know. There's no witches in a I movie know. called Season of the Witch. <laughs> I know. It's great. That movie's great. <laughs> and, then, and then we follow an alcoholic, divorced, Doctor, that is our. He's not even a cop. He's not even a cop. He's a fucking doctor, alcoholic doctor. That's great. Who they what in and 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 okay. So he, the woman whose grandfather or father gets killed at the beginning of the movie that makes the doctor go on this fucking quest, right? Sure. So after a while, right? Like they go and they do their whole thing. He was a fucking robot the whole time? Yep, he was a fembot. She was a robot! Yep, fembot. Great <laughs> fembot. And, and, and then, and then, like, and, and then, okay, so he doesn't even give a shit about his kids until all of a sudden he calls his kids and says, and calls his wife, ex-wife and says, don't let them wear the mask. Then hang up on her, on her doesn't try again. And then he throws the box of these silver shamrock things over the top of these these computers. Yeah. Which, okay, stupid fucking movie. It kills everything. Okay, it, it electrocutes all the robots, except the robot that is standing next to him. Yep. Which is the chick. Yep. And, and... It's supposed to, this commercial is supposed to happen at 9 o'clock at night. And in every city, they say... Dayton, Ohio, New York, New York, right? And then it says nine o'clock. It says go, you know, go to nine o'clock. And then we're in Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. And then hours. we're in Seattle, Washington. And then we're in Los Angeles, California. And it still says nine o'clock, nine o'clock, nine o'clock. There are time zones in the United fucking States. It is not <laughs> nine o'clock everywhere in the United States. We are actually at Eastern time. This is 9.05 Wednesday evening right now. It is not 9.05 Eastern time. It is not 9.05 in fucking Phoenix, Arizona right now. Well, evidently you have not seen the 80s classic slasher movie, New Year's Evil then, sir, because if you had, then you would love this logic. Can I tell you in just two sentences what New Year's Evil is about? 
Sure. It's a serial killer that kills somebody at midnight at different time zones. So he goes from New York, kills somebody <laughs> at midnight, gets on a plane, goes to the Midwest to kill. I can't even finish the sentence. Oh, uh, yes. So, yeah, it's absolutely crazy. Uh, Season the Witch, great fucking title. Uh, love that title. Halloween, Season of the Witch. That's a great There's movie. no witch in the movie. I'm not saying there's not. I'm just saying I just love the title. I just like the title. And the box cart, uh, the box art, cover art, I thought was great. Of, you know, like the, uh, of the trick-or-treating kids on a hill, you know, going into the background. I don't know if that was the cover art that was on your Amazon. Um, it's yeah, that's the same cover. There are there are several pictures that I had seen of it that I've seen, I've seen that. But where the fuck is that witch in the movie? Did I miss it? Well, I mean, the witch was the mask, right? Because the pumpkin mask had the witch mask, and then he had the skeleton. Uh, mask. okay, I understand. I get you it. Now. Yes, so, I get it. Now, would it have been better? Okay, so Ed, season of the witch is batshit crazy. And you're going to have a hero that we're supposed to identify with who was a divorce alcoholic doctor, which is a bad choice. So this movie's already shit, right? We know this movie's shit. Mm -hmm. But to make it even more ridiculous, what if, and here's our other show Call in the Ring, our what if scenarios like they do in WWE. What if we find out that it is tied in with Michael Myers and that Michael Myers' family went to the Silver Shamrock company on a tour and Michael got possessed as a young boy and that's what started the events. Because they watched the Halloween movies in this movie. I know that. I know. I'm just, they I'm just, watched the Halloween movies in this movie. I get it, but I'm saying though, <laughs> what if? What if? This movie's already batshit crazy. That idea that I have is batshit crazy. But do you think just 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 forget about the watch the Halloween movies? Just just pretend that doesn't happen. I'm just asking you. They watch them in this movie. I they showed they them. <laughs> they even show a head. preview of the movie coming out on VHS in this fucking movie. In the movie, they say this movie's coming out on VHS and some on some date. I get that, but I'm saying just, <laughs> just, just get that out of your head. Just get okay, your head. okay, okay, just okay. Happen. Just don't just just forget that out of your head, okay? Okay. What if at the end of the movie we do a flashback and it's the Myers family with other families taking a tour of the Silver Shamrock Company and Michael Myers as a little boy gets taken away somehow with his parents not knowing and he gets possessed or some witch spell on him and that's why he goes back to his home in Illinois and kills his sister. Would that make it more fun? Or would that be absolutely ridiculous? I mean, it would totally... I mean, this movie already pretends... This movie's already shit. So if they just added that in there, it wouldn't have affected how... It could not have made this movie any more worse. Okay. But but it would have, I think, altered the timeline and the universe yeah. for for what was it? what is my favorite slasher franchise. So now, before we get into the rest of the sequels here, this comes to the point of our show here, Movie Guys Verse, is where we kind of give a little bit behind the scenes here. Um, you know, so Halloween 1, of course, was written and directed by John Carpenter. Halloween 2 was not directed by John Carpenter, but he did produce it. And also Halloween 3, believe it or not, the beep boop, beep boop, John Carpenter did the music for Halloween 3. Mm -hmm. So at this point in time, John Carpenter went on record at that point and said that he didn't want to follow Michael Myers anymore. He felt that the first two movies told the Michael Myers story. Where else could we go? He thought with having the name Halloween, you could do an anthology series, a la American Horror Story. Um, so then a new producer came along comes named Mustafa Akkad. And after the bomb with Season of the Witch says, I own the rights to this movie. We are bringing back Michael Myers. He's going to be your next Freddy and Jason. This is happening. And then in 1988, 10 years after the first movie, we get Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Well, didn't he he produced two and he produced two and three, didn't he? He just basically said, I own the rights, you've ruined you're you're not I'm not I want to make money off of this now. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean Mustafa Khan owns the rights at that point. 
Um, you know, I mean, he owns the rights to Michael Myers. He owns the rights to the name Halloween. He is completely the the shareholder of the Halloween franchise at this point. Okay. And he is not going to do an anthology series. John Carpenter is out. John Carpenter will stay out all the way until this new movie that is coming out with having any creative input at all. Which, so by the way, happy. by the way, I found out that one of the co-writers on this movie is on Mr. Movie or, or? One on, yeah, the new movie, the new movie yeah. coming out that we're going to, that we're, we're going to see uh, and review next week for our fans is Danny McBride. Yes. Which is fantastic. Yeah. Danny McBride's a huge Halloween guy. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I feel really lucky uh, that he's uh, at the helm of this. Uh, I mean, he, he, he actually wrote a bunch of cool stuff. Like he, he, you know, like he, he, he wrote, uh, the foot fist way he wrote uh he wrote your highness he was a producer on you know a, a few things like the dudes the dude's awesome mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not gonna in that one. so it's been 10 years and we get the return of michael myers and this is now i know that you and a lot of people say the season of the witches when the franchise took a decline but with this fourth movie this one definitely declined. Now they made more sequels off of this, but it 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 did bad. It stars a young Danielle Harris in her first role. Danielle Harris will come back to the Halloween franchise later in Rob Zombie's remake, where she holds out the twins in the movie. Mm -hmm. yes. Which is why I cannot watch the Halloween remake because I will always remember Danielle Harris as that cute little dark haired girl. And to see her in the remake with full double D sticking out, can't do it. <laughs> I mean, can't do it. I mean, and while that's true, I mean, I understand where you're coming from. She's, you know, she, she does come back for the movie, but it's a, it's like she's not the same person. She's actually the slut in that movie. She is the slut in the movie, which we'll get into that here. In a, but so, so, so Halloween 4 starts off. It's been 10 years since the second movie, which took place in the same night as the first movie. So 1978. So now it's 1988. And they are transporting Michael Myers from one sanitarium to the next. And he has been laying in a coma state for 10 years. Of mm -hmm. course, the movie starts, Michael Myers escapes. And now you got Donald Pleasant's back with, he was burned. Fireball and all in the second movie. And Donald Pleasant comes back in the fourth movie with just a scar on his cheek. <laughs> the, the second movie, for those, there were those who don't remember, the second movie ends with him and Laurie Strode turning on cans of ether and oxygen to distract Michael Myers, who Laurie Strode shot in the face. Yes. And he's blinded. Yes. And then they, and then Donald, uh, and then Dr. Loomis blows up the, uh, I almost said Donald Pleasant, his name, uh, blows up the, the room, doesn't blow up the hospital, just the room. Yes. <laughs> and, and he's in it. He, He's he's he he's he's in the next movie. Yeah, he's in the next. He's in the fourth movie with just a scar on his cheek, and the fourth movie is pretty much a remake of the first one. It follows Danielle Harris. Who is she? Well, she's Laurie Strode's daughter. We find out that Laurie Strode had a daughter with that uh, with that with that EMT hospital guy that she fell mm -hmm. in love with, um, mm -hmm. and they died in a car accident. So she's now 10 years old and, and she's living with who she's living with and Michael Myers comes and torments them. But the big twist in the movie is Danielle Harris wields a butcher knife and now she is the new Michael Myers, or so we think. Until Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers, where yes. Michael Myers is being treated by a homeless man for a year. So what I mean by that is if you have not seen uh, Halloween 4 in a long time, at the end of Halloween 4, you have rednecks on four trucks with dynamite trying to kill Michael Myers at the end of that movie. Michael Myers falls into a well. They put dynamite down there. It blows up. They think Michael Myers is dead. The fifth movie opens up right where that one left off, a la the first and second one. And Michael Myers crawls out of the sewer, finds a hermit, falls asleep. The hermit then takes him and keeps him in his house for a year and then Halloween the next year Michael Myers awakes again and kills the hermit 
So now they are establishing that Michael Myers only is alive or awake on Halloween, and that's it. That's what they're establishing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, why didn't that guy, why didn't that hermit have, like, his hermit friends come over and use Michael Myers as a coffee table? He was, you have a guy who was in a coma living in your house for a year in the same position. Why don't you call a doctor? Like, it, I mean, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> hey, 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 here's a guy with a white mask and he's covered in blood. Maybe I should take care of him for a year. Like, I mean. Nope, what? I'm just going to leave this dead fucking comatose guy who's a giant on my couch. For a year. Yes. A year. Yes. I, I'm going to say that for a year. It's ridiculous. So now, now little Danielle Harris comes back and she reprises her role, and now she's a mute. And you find out in the fifth movie that there is a strange cult, which is by a which is led by a man in black, and they're all about Michael Myers, and they're the reason why Michael Myers is the way they are, leading all the way up to the Paul Rudd starring role, Halloween Six: The Curse of Michael Myers. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, look, without getting into too detail, I mean, I had said this before, like these two movies are basically, they, for, they, they don't really follow, they do follow the story because Michael Myers is trying to kill his niece, right? And then he's right. not, and then all the, and then it, it skips one. And basically, we get two movies of him actually following the story, and then it skips one. Mm-hmm. And it does that twice. And then, you know, we get to H2O, right? He and does kill Daniel Harris in the, uh, in the uh, sixth movie, The Curse of Michael Myers with Paul Rudd. Oh, that's right, yeah. I, but it's not Daniel movie. Harris. It's the Daniel Harris character, mm-hmm. Jamie. Yes. But she's like 17, 18 years old. She gives birth, which is a pretty good opening. Uh, she gives birth to a baby, and then she kidnaps the baby, and then she takes it to this truck stop or whatever. And then she stows the baby away in a trash can. And Michael Myers finds her in this barn and shoves her on that compost heap or whatever that was. Mm-hmm. Whatever that was that he killed her with. So now Jamie's been killed by Michael Myers. Mm-hmm. So, but it's not Daniel Harris. It's the character. And then we right, meet, right. of course, H2O, uh, which you were saying. I'm sorry. Yeah, which we then get the st- Stunner reveal that fucking, which is stupid that it's a stunner reveal. Like, like we didn't fucking know Jamie Lee Curtis was Lori fucking Strode. You what know what I mean? I what you're saying. So like, she she has a different name in the movie. Yes, that wasn't the. Po- you know that that was Lori Strode. She just did that because she was a dean of the school and she was trying to change her identity so Michael wouldn't find her. She was trying to get a new life. But, but wasn't she? But, did, but, but, but she leaves. So she leaves her her toddler daughter in a fucking loony bin, and yeah. goes and has a new life. And becomes yeah. the, becomes the dean of a school. So okay, I knew we were going to talk about H two O for a little bit here because H two O is a really big movie in the franchise. So let's let's talk about it. H2O came out in 1998, so I was 11 years old, and so were you. That was an impressionable age. I mean, my dad took me to go see that. I was excited as hell uh, mm-hmm. to see. Because I remember still to this day as a 31-year-old man, H2O and the Michael Myers mask in the background. It's like, oh, this is going to be good, right? Mm-hmm. And, okay, so watching it all the time as a kid, I just figured, because the way the movie is made, okay, so they're forgetting that 3, 4, 5, and 6 ever happened. This is... <laughs> part three right right okay. well and this is and you got to remember this is right after uh don pleasance died yes so he's obviously not in the movie but but his his voice is that's not his voice that is actually a professional voice actor that does that voice oh really i see i did not know that that's how impressive that guy is um and michael myers kills the original nurse from the first movie when he escaped that nurse that he kills in the opening of this movie, mm-hmm. you have a nurse of Donald Pleasance driving to the mental facility in the first movie, Michael Myers escapes. Mm-hmm. 
that's the same woman, same character. Oh, okay. That's why he goes after her. Interesting, huh? I, I did not know that. Okay, so, uh, but but you know the scene I'm talking about, right? Like in the first movie, right? Where uh, we're yes. this nurse and yeah, with this this random nurse, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well, that's the same character and same moment. And Joseph Gordon Lovett is in this movie and gets a kill. Yes, he. It's a great kill. I'm a little crazy with the stick. Like, <laughs> yeah. great opening. Love the opening. Okay, so mm-hmm. let's talk about Laurie Strode. For years, even in my college years, I always believed that Halloween 3, I'm sorry, H2O was Halloween 3, the real Halloween 3, right? Sure. Well, watching it recently in the past couple of weeks, getting prepared for this review, there are drop lines, just drop lines in the movie that it is not part 3, it is actually part 7. Uh, they said in drop lines, dropped, like, you know, like they don't actually stay on it as the kid, but they just say little things. That Laurie Strode, she said that she faked her death in 1980 mm-hmm. so she can escape if Michael Myers ever came back and she and she faked her death to protect her child. Who she left in an insane asylum. In a no, she didn't. No, she didn't. No, she didn't. And Halloween hospital. Four, no, Halloween 4, Jamie, who is Daniel Harris, was a living a normal life was living a normal life. She didn't know this was going down. Jamie Lee Curtis was in California getting her life together as a teacher. She had no idea. She faked her death and she gave up Jamie for an adoption. So she had no idea that four, five, and six happened. She had no idea. She had well, no- which one was, what am I thinking of? If it's a fucking, if it, it would, where she's in a clown costume in a hospital or the whole movie. That's the fifth movie. Oh, okay. That's the fifth. See, I'm getting, I'm getting, with, with the fact that we're talking about all 30 of these movies at once, like I'm getting them confused in my head. Okay, I'll, I'll spell this out very quickly, even to the fans that don't, that may be confused. Halloween 1 and 2 happen. Forget about Halloween 3. Mm-hmm. After the events of Halloween 2, Jamie Lee Curtis, Laurie Strode, had some mm-hmm. awesome sex, right? And in 1980, sure. gave birth to Jamie who is Danielle Harris, right? Mm -hmm. She was always afraid that Michael Myers was going to come back. And she didn't want Michael to come and kill her daughter. I understand that. Mm -hmm. So she fakes her death in a car accident and and makes sure that Jamie gets up for adoption, right? She fakes her death. Mm -hmm. Jamie goes to adoption. Lori Strode has nothing to do with Jamie. She gave her up so she could protect her. And then she went to California to become a dean of this prep school. And she changed her name completely and had a whole new life and a son in that area so she could protect her firstborn baby girl, Jamie. Okay? Okay. Four happens. Five happens when she's in a clown outfit, you know, and she's a mute and blah, blah, blah. But Lori Strode has no idea that happens. There's also a newspaper clipping floating around as background in Laurie Strode's apartment in H2O. And it says that Jamie Strode, or Jamie, whatever her last name was, found dead. Mm-hmm. So she knows that her daughter's been killed by Michael. That's why when we see her in this movie, she's a full-blown alcoholic, and she's absolutely crazy, because her daughter's been killed by Michael, we've seen that newspaper article, and now she knows that Michael's coming after her. Does okay. that no, I get it. I mean, I, I get it. Um, I, but then, uh, okay, I'm not. Go, go on, on, please. No, go no. on. But, but then, then why is she just? Why are they like in the one that's coming up? Apparently, yeah. Which we're gonna find out. Nothing of what you've just said ever happened. Yes, exactly. Because the movies that we have watched over these past forty years. It was not uh, was not the vision. This is not what they wanted to do. So, what are you going to do? It's the way it is. So, but H two O was great. H two O starred Michelle Williams, who is a great actress now, and and she was fun in that movie. Starring uh, Teen Heartthrob Josh Hartnett mm-hmm. in that movie as well, and he was seventeen years old in that movie. Not the not the actor, the uh, the character, which mm-hmm. is the same age as Laurie Strode was in the first movie. Uh, Great movie, right? Uh, I mean, great atmosphere. LL Cool, LL Cool J's in it. 
Mm-hmm. Right? Just 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 a fun movie. And and the dude the dude who directed it, uh Minor, Steve I think Minor. Is Steve Minor. He he did uh he did a lot of work on Friday the thirteenth one or two and three. Yep. So there's some there's some some tie-ins there. And uh he actually he he I guess he was real close with Sean Cunningham from yep. obviously that franchise. And and didn't Sean Cunningham also do uh didn't he have something to do with one of these Halloween movies or something? Absolutely like, fucking not. I, I mean, I, I thought that he, I mean, I don't remember whether or not he did. No. I thought I could have sworn I saw his name on something. No. Okay. Absolutely not. Okay. Um, the ending, though, of H2O is a great bookend, right? They shouldn't have made any more. H2O should have been the last one, even still to this day, right? Uh, Laurie Strode uh, thinks she kills Michael. Uh, Michael's clearly not dead. Uh, they have a big chase at the end of the ambulance. Michael Myers gets thrown out of the ambulance, gets pinned, and Laurie Strode uh, goes to touch his hand to say goodbye to her brother, chops his head off with uh, with an axe. Michael Myers is officially dead. Or so we think. Until nope, we get he gets wrecked. resurrected. <laughs> Four Four years <laughs> with Buster Rhymes. Four years later. Wow. And, and, and Tyra Banks. And Tyra Banks. Have you seen Resurrection? Do you remember the opening? I have seen it. I do not remember the opening. So Michael Myers doesn't talk, right? Sure. He's a mute killer like Jason, right? Mm-hmm. Michael Myers in H2O, like I just said a second ago, he gets pinned against a tree with an ambulance. He reaches out to Lori. She touches his fingers and chops his head off with an axe, right? That's the ending of H2O, right? Sure. Remember I just said that he doesn't speak? hmm Well, we find out the real ending of H2O in the Buster Rhymes Tower Banks Halloween Resurrection Disaster, where we start off as Laurie Strode is in a mental institution, and she is reading newspaper articles, and we get a flashback of H2O, where Michael Myers finds an EMT, crushes his larynx, puts his costume on him, and, the, and Michael Myers, the guy who got his head chopped off, was not Michael Myers. It was an EMT. Michael Myers lives. Yes. And he kills Laurie Strode in the opening of Resurrection. He kills her. Laurie Strode's dead. And then all the... Well, and you know what? In her second role ever... One of my favorite actresses from one of my favorite TV shows is in this movie, Katie Sackhoff. She plays Jen, and she was that's Starbuck heroine. in Battlestar Galactica. Is is she the heroine, the one that survives? The the blonde one, yeah. Blonde Jen. I thought she was brunette. Um, or she's blonde now. Oh, okay, but 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 I don't know who you're talking about. She is the heroine. She is the she is the star of the yeah. Movie. She's the lead. She's the lead role. Okay. She's Jen. Yeah, it's Jen. Okay, so they decided to do a Blair Witch thing where they decided to go into the Michael Myers house and Buster Rhymes and Tyler Banks has this company where they decide to put uh, security cameras all over and we try to get a POV Michael Myers movie of spending the night in Michael Myers' house because this is my show called Dangertainment. Yes. And I don't know if we can go on any further. Michael Myers comes back into his house. He kills a bunch of kids. Uh, very, very uh, early 2000s, not a fan, and the franchise is over with until my nerd boner came out when I was watching Late Night One Night on either Conan or Letterman or whoever, and Rob Zombie was out, and uh, they said, what's your new movie going to be? Because he just came after The Devil's Rejects, right, which was a critically acclaimed great film. That whole franchise was fantastic. The new one's coming out next year. I can't wait Mm -hmm. to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, and Rob Zombie said, "Well, I'm I'm remaking Halloween." I was watching it with my brother at the time, and I remember my brother and I fell to our knees, kind of like how like uh, kind of like how uh, kind of like how if you're a Muslim and how you pray, you know what I mean, kind of thing. I mean, I would. Yeah, I don't want you to go there, but yes, I understand. Well, I don't know what to call it. Whatever you do when you're Muslim and you pray and you do up and down, whatever. Mm-hmm. That was that was that was him and I. Uh, Rob Zombie, The Devil's Rejects, House of Thousand Corpses, remaking Halloween. Sign me up. Yeah, I am ready to go. Piss the fuck off. That's a terrible movie. Um, you're fucking high. 
Okay, we're going to fight. Go ahead. Well, and here's the thing. Like, I – Rob Zombie basically tells the story of one and two in this movie. He consolidates them. And he gives you more a more realistic approach to a great and iconic slasher film. It's you know, like with the Devil's Rejects and with uh with with House of a Thousand Corpses and and uh, that whole that whole franchise. What was was the other one? Uh, well, that's it. Uh, the third one is the oh, one. Okay, okay. Um, the Three from Hell or something like that. Or yeah, something. yeah. Um, but like, he tells the he tells he gives you a great origin, makes you sort of feel sorry for for Michael. Really, he does because you know like. He gets bullied and bullied and bullied and his, his mom's a stripper and his stepdad beats the shit out of, out of, out of the whole family. And like, you kind of feel bad for him. You're like, you know what, Michael, I get it. I fucking get it, man. Go for it. And, uh, and, and M- Malcolm McDowell plays a great, great Dr. Loomis. Loomis. You done? So- yeah, I want here. You go ahead. You take thirty okay. seconds. I want you to t- listen. Or I want you to take sixty seconds. I'm not going to give you thirty. I'll give you all the time you need. Take no. sixty seconds and tell me why I'm an idiot. Tell me why this fran- this this movie sucks. Well, I mean, okay, Ed. For an example, first thing I'll go right off the bat that <sighs> Malcolm McDowell playing Doctor Loomis was great. I thought he was really good. Uh, however, though. <sighs> I keep on going, ah, because I don't know how to explain this. What made the first Halloween movie so good was it was middle America, suburbia kind of a thing. And you didn't have these rednecks, these fuck you, bitch, and fuck you, bitch, that. And just, ah, just don't want to be around these people. That's Rob Zombie's world. That's not the world of Halloween. And then you also get the fact that his mom is stripped. I'm like, they throw everything negative towards little Michael. And it try to explain why he is the way he is, where I feel that the most scariest thing about Michael Myers is that he's just a normal kid that one day snapped. That's scary. Not uh, the stripper mom gets called into the doctor's office and it's like, hey, look, he's 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 pictures of him killing cats and rats and shit like, you know, your your kids kind of <coughs> fucked up. Like, oh, that's stupid. It's literally stupid. What makes Michael Myers scary is the original movie. Middle class America, little boy just snaps. What doesn't make him scary is a stepdad going, shut the fuck up, bitch. My wife and my daughter's, I'm sorry, my, my mom's a stripper and, and my, uh, my sister's a slut and just all these negative things. It's just, it's not good. It doesn't get you, that's not the scary factor. Because what makes Michael Myers scary, and then in my rant is, is that the little kid could be your little kid next door. Uh, this Michael Myers and Rob Zombie movie, he's not the little kid next door. He's, he's the little kid in the trailer park in the middle of the country. You know what I mean? Just It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's, 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 ugh. it's not scary. It's just not scary. <laughs> I mean, it's not meant to be scary. This one's meant to tell the story. Why it's meant to be scary. I mean, but it's anyway. a horror slasher film, but... Uh, anyway. <laughs> It's, 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 it's exactly. And then you get, and then you get the disaster Halloween two where Michael Myers doesn't even have the mask anymore. And he's walking around the country as a hermit with a big beard and shit, killing people at strip clubs. Oh God, Rob zombie, you suck. Like, like his career. You shut your whore mouth. You absolutely shut your whore mouth. You are so wrong. You are so wrong. His career has not even come close to the success of Devil's Rejects since Halloween 2. And you know it's true. You know it's true. No, it's... I mean, we're just going to argue in circles. No, we're not going to argue in circles. I'm just trying to tell you is that he made The Lords of Salem, which was an okay movie, but did nothing. Um, He made a clown killer movie a year or two ago that did absolutely nothing. Now he decided, you know, I'm going to go back to the well because there's no way in hell that you can make a part three of the Devil's Rejects, they literally got blown away at the, end of the, at, the, at the end of the second movie. So he's going back to the well to get back to where he should be. 
I mean, it's just Halloween 2, not the not the remake, but Halloween 2. Look at his track record afterwards. Destroyed his film career. He was up and up. It is, and this is my rant. This is my rant. Roger Deeper and 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 Roper before, you know, Roper died and Ebert's the way he was. Yeah. They gave the devil rejects two thumbs up. And those tight ass motherfuckers don't give anything like that a thumbs up, but it was great. No. And now they're, look- two, they're two of the most they were two of the most pretentious film critics of all time. And I mean that they're, they're well respected. I mean, I, I respect their opinions. I just disagreed with most of them. Sure. So it is hard, but when they did give they did give two thumbs up, you knew like this is a really fucking good movie. Yeah. So I guess we'll I, I guess we'll end the show with our expectations for Halloween. Um, I'm not expecting anything good because you know my heart's been destroyed for 20 years. I mean, the last great Halloween movie, when in my opinion, was H2O, which came out in '98. So it's been 20 years since. Wow, it's been 20 years since H2O. I just now come to that realization. Mm-hmm. That's how fucking old we are, bro. Not only that, but that's been 20. Oh fuck me! Think about this, dude. Think about this. Think about this. You and I are closer to 40 now than we are 30. Or 40, yeah. 20, 20, I'm sorry. Most of 40 now than our 20. Yeah, no, shut up. But like, okay, so that movie's 20 years ago. So it has been, in my opinion, 20 years since we have gotten a great Halloween movie. So I'm coming into this movie with the lowest of expectations. Mm-hmm. But I'm hoping I get to leave like I did with Venom a few weeks ago. Just, oh, well, this is good. I'm really hoping. Do you have any expectations, Ed? No, no, um, and and here's why. Not that I don't, not that I don't think that they're going to do. A, a, not that they're not going to make the movie good, but the fact that number one, they're telling, they're retelling, pretending the other ones never happened, which I hate when films do that, but it is what it is. I'm, I'm the reason I don't have any expectations is because of what we've seen recently. And I, it's, I, I hate to, to, to blame a movie that's coming out for something that it had nothing to do with, but I've just seen a lot of, of, of Hollywood films in the last three to five years specifically, but mo, more realistically in the last one or two, when they've gone and done these types of things, yeah. that they almost, they almost bastardize the originals. You see, fans, and, we do this for you. Mm-hmm. I mean, Ed, Ed has destroyed his soul for the love of movies because of all the drap that we have seen <laughs> over the years. I, I think Movie Guys Podcast has only given out like two golden headphones ever where mm-hmm. movies is absolutely perfect. That's, right. that's not good. That's and, not good. And, uh, I think we came along at the wrong time of film. Well, I, I don't know, though. I mean, like we... We started with uh, the Force Awakens, so which I absolutely loved, and then we got the Last Jedi. Yeah, I know. So, you know, well, fans, we don't want to keep everybody longer than what we needed to be. We Ed and I always have great discussions when it comes to this stuff, and of course, we're sorry that Eric couldn't make it tonight, but he will be here next week for our new Halloween movie that's coming out next week. Here, we're going to be uh, reviewing that one here. Uh, make sure to check us out at MovieGuysPodcast.com movieguyspodcast.podbean.com you can download us on iTunes on Spotify and iHeartRadio just search for Movie Guys Podcast and follow us on Twitter at Movie Guys Pod and also like us on Facebook Movie Guys Podcast and uh, thank you so much everybody Ed thank you for uh, for uh, for joining me here and we'll be back next week for another awesome episode have a good night